In the previous units, we've looked at a number of different view types that have all utilized the underlying 3D model in order to generate the view itself. So for example, creating a section view, we defined the section line position and Revit generated the view based on the model. With drafting views in Revit, it's fundamentally different. The drafting view itself has no relationship or link to the underlying model. You can think of drafting views as having an unlimited source of blank paper in a pad next to you in which you can manually draw your own standard details. Um, you might want to import CAD details and include them in your documentation. You can still place them onto sheets but they do not reference the model in any shape or form. So when would you use a drafting view in practice? Well, in this project, I've got a drafting view set up. If I switch to it now, this drafting view just consists of a simple threshold detail between two floor finishes. So that may be a typical example of the use of a drafting view where we've got a small standard detail. That detail could happen in many situations in the project. So we don't need to produce a call out or a section from a specific area in the scheme. We just need to document that that is a standard detail that happens. So we don't need to reference the underlying model and as I said previously, with drafting views, we can't see the model in any shape or form. So there's no crop regions. You're not going to find it down here. They are just blank pieces of paper on which you can draft your details. You can also import CAD details and place them in here. So if you've got a stock library of details similar to this that you want to reuse, don't think you have to draw them all out again from scratch in Revit. You can reutilize them uh, by importing them in and I'll show you how to work with existing CAD files later on in the course. To create new drafting views, just go to View and on the Create panel, there is an icon there. It's got like a drawing board and a T-square. That's for your drafting views. So click on that. You will now have a little dialog box presented to you where you can name the drafting view. You can always rename it uh, later in the project browser by right clicking. So if you do know the name you want for that now, let's call that um, floor finish details underscore two. Choose a scale for it. These are going to be at one, two, five. Again, you can change that after if you need to. Hit OK. That new drafting view goes in the group there. And you can see it's a blank uh, piece of paper, if you like, a blank canvas on which you can draft out your details. Now, typically, at this point, you would go to annotate and use detail lines, regions, detail components, and repeating detail components to build up that standard detail or you'd be going to the insert menu and you would be importing your CAD details. I will be showing you how to do that later on in the course. But just for now, I just wanted to show you how you create your new drafting views ready to receive those standard details. Now I've already said that the drafting views cannot access the model i.e. you can't see any of the model components from a drafting view. However, we do have the option to link callout references to drafting views, which can be quite useful. So for example, with our carpet threshold we produced before, i.e. this one here, if we go back to a plan view, it may be useful to actually point out on a plan exactly where that detail happens. So we could draw a call out. So if I go to view call out. Now, if I just proceed and define the call out boundary, Revit will produce a separate call out view. And we saw that in a previous unit. However, if 
you look up on the ribbon menu, we actually have the option to reference another view. So I tick that on. I can now pick one of my drafting views from the drop down, threshold detail one. Go ahead and produce the boundary as before. Just reposition that bubble so it's more legible. So no new separate callout view was produced because we referenced an existing view already. And now when this plan and the drafting view get dropped onto sheets, that will get filled in and tell the person reading the drawing exactly where to find that detail. And the beauty of this technique is you can create as many callout references all pointing to the same detail as you need. So for example, if that same detail happens at this door here, we can reference other view, point it again to threshold detail one, do our boundary, knowing that when these go onto sheets, that reference will point to that same detail accordingly. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point, you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.